My name is John W. Munkle, Jr. I was born in 1926 at St. Luke's Hospital in Chicago. I was the only child. My dad was John W. Munkle, Sr. And my mother's name was Allen, O-L-L-U-N, Anderson Munkle. My mother was from Farmington, Illinois, which is a suburb of Peoria. She was one of five children that she had, had four brothers. Uh, and back then, that was when you pumped water at the sink from a pump at the well, and you walked uh, several yards to go to the outhouse. My name is Doris May Hawk Mokel, and I was born in 1926. I was born in Los Angeles, California. I also am an only child. Uh, my mother was Gertrude Jeanette Hawk Heller, and she had a sister, Doris, whom I named after. My father was born in Oklahoma. His name was Harry Wesley Hawk. I uh, had a grandfather, great-grandfather from uh, England, and a great-grandmother from, wait, one was Scotch and one was English. Well, oh, one was Irish. They never got along very well, but they <laughs> got married. <laughs> he used to say if I had a drop of Irish blood in me, I'd cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my mother was born in, in Chicago. Um, my father, as I mentioned, was born in Oklahoma, uh, near Oklahoma City. His family traveled from the East Coast through the country, through Oklahoma, and that's where they're, they said they had 13 children. My, my father was the oldest. My mother's parents moved out there because they had a, a saloon. And the 1920s was not a healthy place to have a saloon. Uh, so my grandfather sold it and they moved west. Uh, I always thought that was an interesting story, and I wish I had asked more about it. My dad left home when he was very young, in his te early teens, became a cowboy. He was a traveling cowboy. And he met my mother. Well, let's see, he went into business in, in Los Angeles for um, a battery shop. It's, I guess you had to have your battery recharged often in those days. And uh, then, then came the Chicago Depression, the Great Depression. He lost his business and they moved to Chicago because mother had relatives here. And he got a job here, so Firestone actually it was. He was very uh, tool capable. My dad had a number of jobs as a salesperson, moving around here and there. He worked for Mars Candy Company and uh, always wanted to have his own business. And so finally did, well, I think I was 10, yeah, and enrolled at Whittier School, and I was only there a short time because that only went up to fourth grade, and uh, then I went to Lincoln School, 
and uh, we were both in the fifth grade, but not in the same rooms. We didn't really know each other till about sixth grade, I think. I grew up at 740 Randall, across the street from Randall Park. I went to grammar school at Lincoln School. The park district did not exist way back then when I was growing up, but the village would come some winters and flood Randall Park. It was a baseball field. They would flood it with water so you could ice skate there. I'm quite familiar with Downers Grove over that period of time. Uh, I can remember when there were uh, brick streets, Main Street was uh, brick streets, and my uh, grandfather was, back then there was, the the mayor was the president of the village, and he was, I think, president of the village from 1900 to 1906. And as I say, it was instrumental in getting the Main Street, at least the brick streets. When I started working in the hardware store, he was there, he was, you might say he was working, my dad was pretty much in charge at that point, but he was always there. I remember when I first started, I would attempt to wait on somebody, I would ask him, well, where is this? For some reason, I would think of BBs, sold BBs in little cartridges, and uh, so I went to and said, where are the BBs? Well, they're over there in this drawer. And so obviously I had a lot to learn about the uh, hardware business. The business had been there since 1884. Well, way back then, uh, nails were five cents or six cents a pound, and now they're maybe, what, a dollar and a half a pound. And we had them, in bulk, they'd come in 100, 100 pound wood, uh, I guess you call them kegs, that we had to open and, and lift 100 pounds into the respective drawer for six penny, eight penny, 10 penny, whatever size they were. And uh, we actually had a, a, I think they were called nail picks, where you would take this to drag the nails out to put them in the container to go on the scale. I was 10 years old when I started working at the store, and back then, of course, there was a lot of farm trade. So we had, well, hundreds or whatever you want to call it, of, of little bins that had a, a four inch bolt, a, six inch bolt or eight inch bolt, all separated. And I had to go through and count these bolts. One bin might have 27 bolts, another one might have 60 bolts. And then back then the uh, bolts were all coated to keep them clean, I guess. And my hands at the end of the day were just all black. Uh, so that's how I started. In fact, that's ironic, I never applied for a job. My job from day one, and I was more or less designated that uh, I was going to be there, that the store would continue to operate, and it finally closed in those 96, 111 years on Main Street. So, saw quite a few changes. It used to be on Saturday nights, uh, all the stores would stay open us to um, nine o'clock. And the farmers then, you might say the farmers, the outlines maybe were 55th Street, Fairview Avenue, Ogden, and Belmont. Theoretically, anything outside that area was farmland. And the farmers would come to town on Saturday night with what they called bib overalls, where <laughs> they had straps over the shoulders. And all the women had skirts on, you know, 
no pants back then. But they would come to town and do a lot of business. And I think there, at that time, there was maybe one restaurant, and ironically, the name of it was Martinis. But other than that, no uh, food available in town. I don't know how many days or hours I worked. Well, one evening, got home work. My dad gave me four dollars. Four dollars. What am I going to do with four dollars? That's a ton of money. I suppose it'd be forty dollars a day. I look at him, gee whiz, holy cow. I'm so fortunate to get this. Say my job was built in. A lot of the fellows my age did caddy work at uh, Hinsdale Golf Club. That was the other job available. Yeah, my grandfather was still involved in the store. In fact, as they say, when I started, if somebody wanted something, I maybe would consult him. Well, where is this located? Because there was tons of drawers we had, and there was also cabinets that, on the front of the cabinets was a glass enclosure that theoretically displayed what was in the, the items behind that door. And so, you look there, is this, is this the storm window hanger here or in the next door where it is, but that was something that was unique. I remember the days back when you sold coal, you had coal in your, for your furnace at home. Uh, we would get carloads of coal. All this was done by hand, and so we usually had to get the start shoveling coal at loading trucks say at 7.30 in the morning to get it to people's house all during the day. We, was two, we had two trucks doing that full time. And he did some of it in the summer so people could start uh, stock up when they really needed the coal. Yeah. Oh, and the ice house was there. Yes. It was right next to the ice house, was it not? If, Let's see, if you're going down Gilbert and kept going straight into the uh, parking area now, behind the library, you would run, there was a big, I call it house, but bigger than a house house, it was called the ice house. That's where you could go and buy ice or get, I think there were blocks of ice, like I think they weighed 25 pounds, something like that. You know, the banks closed during the Depression, and uh, it, it, we had no little banks at Downers Grove, and some or other, uh, we became, my, let's see, I think my dad had worked a year or two at, at First National in Chicago. I don't know, it was every other day or something like that, my mother, our bookkeeper, whatever, would take the money to Chicago, and maybe, maybe they, she'd have $10. Uh, it's hard to say, but there was here were these females on the train, ten dollars made a lot of money at that time, taking the money to Chicago. To deposit it. To deposit, yes, right. My grandmother was, back then she was classified as crazy, today it would be Alzheimer's. How she passed away, and ironic, the uh, wake, her, her cough was was a, um, I think a day or two in what was called the den of the house they lived in at 811 Maple Avenue, which you, you can imagine that not happening today. And so people, lots of people came through to, to counsel with my grandfather. Um, well, that's the way it was done in those days, you know, in their Homes, not funeral parlors. Yes. Downers Grove in those days was a typical small town. I really liked it. I liked it from the time we moved here. It was, I just seemed to fit. Uh, the main street 
was the stores were all there were nice stores along there uh, clothing stores uh, drug stores there were a couple of drug stores that were like hangouts and uh, the dime store oh my you could get a hot dog for lunch for what was it a dime or 25 cents was very very small We were all in the high school group, but we didn't start dating till I was in college. I think we had or a couple ever. of dates. No. In high school. No. Well, maybe, maybe so. I think we had a couple, yeah. <laughs> and we didn't take. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long time ago. Because <laughs> she definitely ended up, her boyfriend was one of my very best friends, and. My girlfriend was one of your very best That's friends. That's right. We were all yeah. in the same group of yes. buddies. Back then, dating uh, was maybe just a Coke date, to go into the uh, to Wolf's drugstore and having a Coke, or maybe going to a movie. That was a bigger deal. Uh, but a really big deal is it would be a high school function that you had a date for, like going to a dance. Well. Uh, Another big date back then was going to O. Henry. Oh, that's right, yes. O. Henry was a dance... Ballroom, ballroom. Yeah, a ballroom, but that was a big date. You had to drive out there and dance and so forth. And but they did have big name bands there. It was Guy Lombardo. Oh, Lord. That was a... <laughs> I hated Guy Lombardo. <laughs> well, that was a band that... Was Sammy Kay there? Yeah. No, I don't think Glenn Miller was there. No. We went to a movie on a date or with a group of friends. Uh, we went to the Tivoli in Downers Grove. I used to try to get there before 6.30 when the time changed and it was a dime. So maybe it was 25 cents afterwards, I don't know. Yes, I was quite involved in sports. Back then, there were, there were two categories of players. One was called lightweight players, and one was called heavyweight players. And I think the dividing line was like 135 pounds. In other words, in the spring of each year, a principal of what some other schools would come and weigh you. If you were 135, you were lightweight. If you're over 135, you're a heavyweight in sports. And I was involved in sports. In fact, I, uh, I started and played, in, and played in every football and basketball game in my junior years and senior years. And I was the only one in a senior year that was a st starter for every game in basketball. And ironic, I was the high scorer. So, what maybe there I have to recollect is at our house, original house in 740 Randall, my dad had a backboard and obviously basketball basket erected on our garage. You know, it was a two-car garage, so that I could go out there anytime and bounce the ball around or play or so forth. I'll have to say that the girls really rooted for these boys. It was it was a fun, fun time. And we'd all sit in the stands and and yell at them. And I can remember John, he was a lightweight at that time. I can remember uh, him shooting long shots. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in high school, I started working at the dime store on Main Street, which was a Woolworth store. I started out as of one of the booths there to sell. And then they came and asked me if I would come up in the office. And so I was elevated to the office and ended up counting money. <laughs> so I guess they thought I had, they, they knew I had a, a 
penchant for mathematics because I became a mathematics uh, major when I went to school, violin education. And then of course the hardware store was just there. Everybody went into the hardware store, whether you wanted to buy anything or just walk through from the front door to the back door. The news agency was there and that was a, a big place too where you always go for comics and um, talk, small talk, stuff like that. Oh, my dad had a Hudson agency for a while up on Ogden Avenue. Um, I guess everybody knows the Hudson didn't make it, but it was, it was nice for a while. I graduated from Downers Grove High School in 1944. The next night, I was at the Great Lakes Training Center. I had uh, enlisted in the Navy. I was what called radar sonar technician, and back then, that's when that's when. So I say radar and sonar was relatively new. So I actually ended up going to school for nine months to learn about it. I went to school at Treasure Island in San Francisco Bay. And kind of the ironic thing was that the same school existed at Navy Pier in Chicago. Now I still to this day don't know how I got to Treasure Island, but I did. So it was kind of experience, but the, Got to know San, the town of San Francisco. What was it, Bernadine's Fish House? We'd go for seafood dinners. Eventually shipped out to uh, Pearl Harbor. And uh, I was way around, went all around the Pacific. I was at uh, Anahui Talk, uh, Guam. Saipan, uh, Nagoya, Japan, and Wakayama, Japan. I was at Tsingtao, China, and Shanghai, China, and did touch at the Philippines. I was on a, a cruiser, the USS Cleveland. And, well, actually, uh, three days out of going out for duty three days out was the armistice. My fellow Americans, the living memory of the world war is close to each and every one of us today. And we were in a great big task force with about 50 ships and we were been told they were on our way to bombard Wake Island. Now that's what we were told. We might have been on our way to Japan, that could have been. On the way, we'll see between, I think, Guam and Saipan, we hit a yeah, typhoon. In fact, this typhoon was so severe that two ships actually went down. And it was all you could do to lay in your bunk, just lay in your bunk, if you can imagine that, getting tossed around. So that was quite an experience to do that. Well, when we graduated from high school, John went into the Navy, of course. I went to college. He had written to several, several colleges that, to decide uh, what one to go to, and he chose Denison University, which is where I went. And uh, we just decided to go together. That this, with our transportation, and it went from there. We started dating right away, didn't we, John? Yes. I, for some reason I can remember, we were out one night, what was it called? Turf, I think it was called turfing. Oh. It was the term. <laughs> <laughs> In the car, I, and I just came and said, will you marry me? She said, oh, sure, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I had already decided <laughs> the answer to that. I was looking for summer work, and I did get a job, which I used, I uh, worked out for two summers at the Last Word Restaurant, a very nice chicken restaurant on Ogden Avenue. They would put out placements on the table, which said, when chicken like this is served, the wise man never lingers. He puts aside his knife and fork and eats it with his fingers. <laughs> We got married. Actually, I graduated from Denison one weekend and was married the next weekend. So it was a, a wild time, I guess you could call it. I think the smartest thing I ever did was marry Doris May. We didn't have a place to, to live right away, so uh, rather than move in with the parents, we. Uh, sublet a place on Main Street from a teacher who was gone for the summer. And so we had a nice little little spot there. And then in the fall, we, rent, we rented a house on uh, the east side of town, uh, oh, Sherwood. Do you recall a big uh, crash at the Depot and Downers Grove freight train going west, a great big caterpillar fell off about where the depot is. And so then the train coming up, say, from the west to going to Chicago ran into that. And I don't think. That was 1947. Was it 47? Yeah, it was. Yeah. But we happened to be home, probably home from school at that time. And so I went down the next morning and saw this. The locomotive was uh, between the Washington Street crossing and the uh, depot. And of course, uh, uh, other cars, uh, train cars tipped over and, and so forth. So that was quite an experience to see that. It was right after we moved into Middaw, because the house was new and there were mice in there, because it was a new house. And I was sitting on the, with my feet up on the couch, watching the water on the living room floor. I called John and said, you gotta come home and bring mouse traps." He said, I can't come home, we're on fire. Adjacent to the bank was a Thompson store for men, a men's clothing store. Evidently, when they closed in the morning, somebody left an iron on, electric iron, on in the basement of the clothing store. And somehow that, I guess, ignited some adjacent clothing or something like that, which then, of course, trailed up to the rafters and then from the rafters into the, uh, the uh, bank building. So you might say, that obviously, the, um, most of the fire occurred in the bank building. The, the weather was so cold in the zero area, um, and the firemen would not be able to use oh. their hands. They were so cold and they would go down to the hardware store to warm up. I believe into the basement of the store where we had a sitting area, eating area. And uh, our daughters were down there helping. Back then, if you needed to go to the hospital, you called the funeral home. And they would come bring the um, the hearse, and well, this happened with my dad. That's the reason I know it. That 
he had this heart attack and uh, so he, there was no 9-11 then. Came and took him to uh, Hinsdale. Back then when you had a heart trouble, you rested. There was no surgery. And of course, eventually he had a heart attack to uh, kill them. My father passed away in 1960, yes. Yeah, I can remember now because Larry, Larry was born in 59, and, and our son was born in 59. So there's three generations at one time, but just shows you the difference between now. Back well then, then, after he was gone, how did you feel about being left at the store? Well, yes, Talk all about of us. That. I went from more or less being an employee to running the hardware store. Of course, here was many people there, obviously older than I was and more experienced than I was. Because it was designated that in my dad's will, I would get the hardware store and my mother would have everything else as investments and so forth. So here was I with working, trying to handle these people, with, but they realized that uh, since I'd worked there, I a little bit knew how to run it, but uh, ironic here is all these people older than me and I was their boss. But everybody was very helpful at that time. We built a house in Denver Woods and had a wonderful uh, architect John Wendell, who worked with me, and uh, uh, we got the type house we wanted with a bedroom for each of the kids. I remember my son, who was about five at the time, telling this one gal that worked at the store, well, each one of us are going to have a, our own bedroom except mom and dad have to live together. <laughs> um, but we got the kind of a house we really wanted. We loved living there. In 1984, we had a big 100-year anniversary that I worked on for a year and a half. I even had professional help doing it. And so, so we made quite a day out of it and incorporated other businesses in town and for some reason or other I managed to put away a, a display in the store of uh, old time pictures of uh, the store when it started and so forth. Uh, uh, originally, let's see, I think it was in 1950, my dad uh, my help, kind of help from me expect it doubled the size of the store. Well, the old fashion had wood floor, which every morning you put down sweeping compound and swept the floor. Well, Leslie and Lindy, well, they all they all did, yes. But Leslie was the main one to work there and worked all the time except while you were at school. Oh, I'll have to say this, the night when John closed the door for the last time, turned the key in the back door. I was there, Leslie was there, John and me, and we walked out of the, out of the store, locked the door, and we looked at each other and cried. It was a sad time. It was. Well, way back then, it was, the store was kind of an icon on Main Street that I would say in the course of a week, every policeman and every fireman 
and most of the village officials would have been there to visit or make a purchase. John, think about the two children we've lost and uh, how that changed things. Yes. Yeah. Our son was in a very bad accident. He, he was hospitalized for four years and died. Mm -hmm. And we just, the, the family was all gone by then. So we sold our house in Denver and bought this place here and we've lived here ever since. Over the past years, we have lost a, a daughter and a son. All right, I, I miss the family, having the family at home. That was, it was just great. We would have such a good time at the dinner table. Well, nowadays, uh, a lot of people constantly with their iPhone or whatever in their hands, doing this, doing that, in other words, I don't, feel that maybe kids have connections with their parents like we had with our kids. Uh, they weren't on the machine every, all day, every day. Well, I hope our grandchildren are interested in where they came, from where they came, and uh, the people that got them where they are today. Yeah, I would hope that they would not be tied up too much in this electronics field, that they spend time being casual and conversing or uh, just being friendly. I have not ever wanted to, to uh, live anywhere but Donner's Grove. Although had our lives changed, I would have gone along with that. How about oh, you, John? You know, obviously, I've been happy. All my experience has been good in Downers Grove.